Hi and welcome to the video. We're going to be covering how we can implement LSH in Vice. Now we covered LSH and, and how it works using random projection in a previous video which I'm going to release at the same time as, as this video so I'll link to that in the description if you want to understand how LSH works but in this video we're just going to cover how we implement it in Vice. So we're going to be using the sift one m data set which you can download using i'll put a link to the script in the description but it's just a, a big data set of dense vectors now from this we'll get our one million samples xb and we also have our queries which i'm going to just we're just going to use one query at a time okay so we'll have one query 1 million samples and we perform our search using that. So what we first want to do is import Vice. Uh, I'm going to get my dimensionality, which is, is it xb.shape1, uh, I think, d. Yep, 128. So that's our dimensionality of each vector within the SIFT1M data set. And initially, let's use an n bits value of 4, which gives us if we we think about it how many how many buckets does that give us we, we can do this right so it gives us a total of 16 buckets okay uh, these are also potential buckets our vectors aren't necessarily going to uh, be separated between all of them they might we might end up only using like 10 of those buckets for example okay and then what we want to do is initialize our index so vice index lsh and in here, we need to pass our dimensionality and also our n bits value. So how many binary values we're going to include within each bucketed item. So do we, first thing, it's always good to check. Do we need to train the index? Index is trained is true. So that means we don't need to train it. There's no optimizations or anything we need to do here. So that's good. Don't need to worry about that and then so without needing train it all we do is index add and we add our data okay and now we're actually just ready to go ahead and search so we do di equals index search xq and let's return let's set k up here actually so let's set k equal to 10 okay so we do k and then we get the the these are the apparently the most similar indexes to our query okay and there's one good thing to check here which makes it really easy to figure out if we have enough buckets or not is d which is the distance between those vectors now obviously if we have all of our vectors in a single bucket and uh, we, we search and our query ends up in the same bucket. All of the distances here are going to be zero because they're all going to be exactly the same uh, Hamming distance, which is what we're returning. So let's look and that's, that's what we get. <laughs> of, I mean, we, we have very few uh, numbers here, so that's not that surprising. Let's push K up to 10K. You'd think at this point, you know, surely we'd get some ones, but no. So at least the first 10,000 nearest neighbors are all within one bucket. So it clearly, you know, there's an issue here. We can't differentiate between all of those. But if we if we just increase this to a, a very high number, uh, let's say like 500,000. So this is returning half of the index. At this point, we should, I imagine, see, we, we see a few ones. So at some point, within the first 500,000 items, we do actually, um, we, we, we move from a single bucket to at least one other bucket. Now, if we think about it, we can, we can actually estimate roughly how, uh, what n bits value we need in order to kind of get a better distribution uh, between our, our buckets so to not have everything in, in a single bucket so let's try these we have uh, for n bits 
in in these values let's give it a go see what we get um and we see okay n bits equals two so this gives an gives us an average of two hundred and fifty thousand um items within each bucket so obviously that's not useful uh here we get 62k again not useful 4k 15 okay that's a lot better right but it's still not useful because we kind of want you know, if we if we set k equal to ten, um, this isn't really going to give us anything particularly useful. So, and and we also need to consider the fact that we in our buckets, not all of them are going to get used. And what we will find is that um, it's almost like there's there will be a majority of, or there will be a a minority of buckets that end up with the majority of vectors. So we we need to go sub one uh, for, for this to to work so I, I would say something probably n bits of 24 we're, we're getting that i mean that value actually looks pretty good 0 0.05 so on average we should get uh, 0 0.05 items within each bucket okay so i mean let's let's test that so we're going to copy this and we'll just write a similar code to what we wrote before. Although one thing, before we do that, let's just check uh, the average similarity. Let, let's, uh, should we change K to like 100 or 10? Let's, let, let's go with 10. Yeah, let, let's do 10. And what I want to do is, uh, given that, I want to calculate the, the cosine similarity, average cosine similarity. So we'll do that we use from sk learn metrics pairwise import cosine similarity this is just a super quick way for us to calculate it and then check um, sk learn and we'll do cosine similarity and we have i zero XQ should. Oh, so sorry. You need to. Uh, sorry, you need to get there. The indexes. So I I just contains the indexes. Uh, we need to we need to pull them out of XB. Okay, and we have this. So we also need to take the mean of that. So cos mean. We get zero point four four which is just the average of, of those the average similarity of those so it's pretty low let's compare that to if we did that for the whole um the whole data set so <laughs> like this let's see what we get okay so actually these are yeah i mean these are <laughs> slightly more similar um so we even you know get slightly better results even even with that uh, terrible sort of bucketing and so what I want to do is is repeat that process we just did there but I want to do it for different n bits values so we need to take our index bring it down here and we're going to say this we do index dot add our data and then we do di equals index shirt search as we as we usually do uh, k is 10 and then we want to do cos equals cosine similarity again we're going to do xb i so we're pulling out those indexes that we've got um, we're doing this different n bits values hence the hence the loop and xq okay and then what we're going to do is just print n bits is equal to whatever it's equal to at that point and then new line i'm going to put um the, what the similarity so the similarity is equal to cos dot mean like that and let's just see what we what we get so okay cool so so we look here and so n bits of two is, is terrible, gets better, gets better. And then at 24, 
So that bit where we had the 0 0.05, we get the, the maximum value. So we get this uh, 73 here, 74, which is the best we get. And then it, it kind of comes off a little bit here. And I've kind of visualized that here. So this is the same um, sort of structure. I've gone a little bit high with, with n bits as well. And this is essentially the sort of structure we get. So the bit that we just kind of saw was this section here, where we're increasing n bits and reducing the number of, uh, or reducing, like heavily reducing the number of vectors within each bucket on average. And the cosine similarity just shoots up really quick. But then afterwards, uh, we still get this kind of slow increase. And that's because, so the buckets are now quite spread, like the, the vectors are spread very nicely between different buckets. But as we increase the resolution even further and further, all it means is that we're adding more of the original information, the original positional information of those vectors, and essentially improving the resolution of those vectors. So they're just getting slightly more accurate in the whether the hashed buckets are closer to other very similar or, or not similar vectors. Now, essentially, the binary vectors are more heavily representing uh, the original dense vectors. And that's why we see that slight increase that continues even after we get to, to n bits of 32. Now, one final thing I just wanted to quickly cover um, is say we do have issues and, and we want to sort of visualize the actual buckets themselves. You know, how, how can we how can we extract those buckets and, and, and view and, and view the number of vectors that we have in each one? Now there isn't any any way of doing this in in um, in FICE. So you, we kind of just have to put our own uh, code together. So what we need to do is I'm going to create an, first create another index uh, because I want to visualize these. So I'm going to do and if if I visualize it with n bits of 32, there's going to be well how many how many buckets would would we have there? It would be uh, two to the power of 32. So <laughs> yeah. We can't visualize that many buckets. So we're going to go with four and n bits of four, which gives us 16 buckets. So index LSH, we have D and we're going to use a n bits value of four. So n bits equals four. I'll just put that there. Okay. We're going to add our vectors and now what we want to do is actually extract those binary vectors themselves. So to do that, we write array. So we're going to store them in, in the array variable. And we do vice.vector to array like this. And in here we do index.codes. So codes, um, just that word there is essentially that means you know the binary vectors that we've built they are called codes that's all it means but and we use it this word a lot in in similarity search so it's worth remembering also n bits uh, is is used a lot as well so in future videos we will uh, in this series we you will see them uh, quite a lot so then let's have a look at what we have we have okay so we want to pull out the binary codes and we're getting these uh, these numbers which is not exactly what we expect, or or is it, right? Um, well, okay, let's have a look at the, the min value here. Zero, okay, array max. Okay, so we get zero to 15, which means we get 16 values. And okay, let's do n to the power of n bits. Okay, so that means we have 16 unique buckets that all of our vectors are, are spread between. So, that's interesting. Let's see how many vectors we have. We have 1 million. So we have 1 million spread between 16 buckets. So actually that sounds about right. Uh, but how do we... So these these values here, these are just the integer versions of our binary vectors. So, um, well, like this is represented by a 0. And this is represented by 
one, right? So what we can do is use this little little script here to convert them into uh, the actual binary vectors. So here, this, this value is our first one, which is a five, and the next one is a 12, which you see here. So, I mean, that's, that is our, there are binary vectors and we can, we can visualize how they are, are spread. Um, how many items are within each one of those buckets using this array? And what we'll get is something that looks like this. Um, so this is what I mean where we have, so we have 16 buckets, which you can, you can see on the left here. Uh, so all of these, we've 16 of those and not all of them even have any, any vectors in. So we have, so we have one, two, three, four that don't even contain any vectors. And then the majority, the vast majority are contained within, uh, these and these, right? So, so these four buckets contain almost everything and they have loads they have uh, so the count is is to the thousands there so here that that number add a few more zeros onto the end um so yeah the these four buckets have far too many far too many vectors in for it to be useful so that's why we before we increase it uh, increase our in bits value up to 24. Now, I think, I mean, that's basically everything I wanted to, to cover, but just quickly in terms of performance. Um, so visualize these using, this is using the FICE LH, S, LSH index. Um, so we have N bits. So obviously we just increase N bits loads. Uh, we increase the, the recall performance. So that's one thing about LSH is that to get good performance, you rarely have to increase the N bits value a lot. And at that point, it actually gets it can get really inefficient. Um, so this is a the time for each query as compared to a flight index. So obviously, I mean, you you kind of want to be careful with a LSH index. Obviously, it can be useful, um, but you know, high dimensionality is difficult to to balance well with with speed. And accuracy but obviously you, you know it can be done it just depends on how much accuracy you're willing to sacrifice because in most cases with LSH you will be sacrificing a reasonable amount of accuracy so the recall here is about 50% and um, so that's uh, it's it's managing to to identify 50% around here of the same items that a flat index would would identify and it's only slightly faster so yeah you just have to sort of weigh you know what is most important for your use case with that but anyway that's it for lsh um this this is the last video we'll, we'll cover uh, for lsh for now in the next few videos and articles we're going to be covering a few different indexes and and how we use them uh, effectively so it should be pretty interesting but we're definitely getting a bit more advanced than lsh now so that should be good well that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one